Heart disease is our number one killer. Killer number two is cancer. What happens if you put a cancer on a plant-based diet? Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues found that the progression of prostate cancer could be reversed with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors, and no wonder. If you drip the blood of those eating the standard American diet onto uh, cancer cells growing in a petri dish, cancer growth is cut down by about 9%. But put people on a plant-based diet for a year, though, and their blood can do this. The blood circulating throughout the bodies of those eating plant-based diets has nearly eight times the stopping power when it comes to cancer cell growth. Now this is for prostate cancer, the leading cancer killer specific to men and women, it's breast cancer. So they wanted to repeat this study using women and breast cancer cells instead, but look, they didn't want to wait a whole year to get the results. So they said, well, let's see what a plant-based diet can do in just two weeks against three, uh, three lines of human breast cancer cells. Here's the before uh, cancer cell growth powering, at 100, powering away at 100%. Here's after just two weeks eating healthy. Here's kind of a before picture. This is a photomicrograph, photograph taken under a microscope. What they did is they laid down a confluent layer like a carpet of, of uh, human breast cancer cells. Um, and then they drip the blood of women eating the standard American diet onto those cells. And as you can see, it kind of breaks up the cancer into these kind of cancer continents here. Um, uh, so even women eating crappy diets aren't totally defenseless. But then they take these same women, put them on a plant-based diet two weeks later, so they act as their own controls. Same women, two weeks later after a plant-based diet, they lay down another layer of breast cancer, and then they drip the blood of the same women two weeks later, and their blood can do this, right? Just a few individual cancer cells left with their bodies cleaned up. Before and after just two weeks eating healthy, their blood became that much more hostile to cancer. Slowing down the Growth of cancer cells is nice, getting rid of it's even better. This is what's called apoptosis, programmed cell death. Bodies were able to somehow kind of reprogram the cancer cells, forcing them into early retirement. This is what's called tunnel imaging, uh, measuring DNA fragmentation or cell death. So dying cancer cells show up as little white spots. So as you can see in the little corner there, there's a dying cancer cell. Again, this is after you drip the blood of women eating the standard American diet onto them. Then you take these same women Two weeks later, eating healthier, drip their blood again on, a, on, a, on cancer, and you see this. It's like you're an entirely different person inside. The same blood, now coursing through these women's bodies, gained the power to significantly slow down and stop breast cancer growth within just two weeks of eating a plant-based diet. What kind of blood do we want in our body? What kind of immune system? Right? Do we want you know, blood that just kind of rolls over when new cancer cells pop up? Or do we want blood circulating to every nook and cranny in our body with the power to slow down and stop? It? Now this dramatic strengthening of cancer defenses was after 14 days of a plant-based diet and exercise. They had these uh, women out walking 30 to 60 minutes a day. You say, well, wait a second. If you do two things, I mean, how do you know what role the diet played? So the researchers decided to put it to the test. So this is measuring cancer cell clearance. This is what we saw before. The effect of blood taken from those eating a plant-based diet, in this case for an average of 14 years, along with mild exercise, just like out walking every day. Plant-based diet and walking, that's the kind of cancer cell clearance you get. Compare that to the cancer stopping power of your average sedentary meteor. You see a little burger in there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Which is basically non-existent. All right. Now, but this middle group is interesting. Instead of 14 years on a plant-based diet, 14 years standard American diet, but 14 years of daily 
strenuous, hour-long exercise like calisthenics. They wanted to know if you exercise long enough, if you exercise hard enough, can you rival some strolling plant eaters over here? And the answer is exercise helped. No question. But literally 5,000 hours in the gym was no match for a plant-based diet. <clears throat> Same thing as we saw before. Even if you're a couch potato eating fried potatoes, you're not totally defenseless. You can kill off a few cancer cells. If you exercise for 5,000 hours, you can knock off cancer cells left and right, but nothing appears to kick more cancer tush than a plant-based diet. <clears throat> we think it's because of the animal proteins, meat, egg, white, and dairy proteins, increasing the levels of IGF-1 in our bodies, insulin-like growth factor 1, a cancer-promoting growth hormone involved in the acquisition and progression of malignant tumors. But if we lower animal protein intake and put people on a plant-based diet, their IGF-1 levels drop. This is the graph on the left. And if you put people on a plant-based diet for years, it drops even further. And their IGF-1 binding protein levels go up. Um, IGF-1 binding protein is like our body's emergency brake. It's one of our ways our body protects itself from excessive growth. Sure, within two weeks, you can drop your, uh, your liver's production of IGF-1. But wait a second. What about all the IGF-1 you have circling in body from the bacon and eggs you had three weeks ago? Well, your body releases this snatch squad of binding proteins into the bloodstream to tie up any excess IGF-1. As you can see, um, uh, binding protein levels go up within weeks, continue to uh, get better at the longer one eats healthy. Here's the experiment that really nailed IGF-1 as the villain. Same as last time. Oh, did I go back? Same as last time, uh, go on a plant-based diet, cancer cell growth drops, cancer cell death shoots up. But then here's the interesting column here. What if you add back to the cancer just the amount of IGF-1 banished from your system because you were eating healthy for two weeks? What happens? You erase the diet and exercise effect. It's almost as if you never started eating healthy at all. So the reason the largest prospective study on diet and cancer ever found that found that the incidence of all cancers combined was lower among those eating vegetarian than those eating meat. Uh, maybe because they're eating less animal protein, so end up with less IGF-1, and so end up with less cancer growth. How much less cancer are we talking about? Middle-aged men and women with high protein intake, 75% increase in total mortality, fourfold increase in the risk of dying from cancer, but not all proteins specifically animal protein, which makes sense, of course, given the um, higher IGF-1 levels. <clears throat> the academic institution sent out a press release with a memorable opening line. That chicken wing you're eating could be as deadly as a cigarette explaining that eating a diet rich in animal proteins during middle age makes you four times more likely to die from cancer, which is comparable to what you see with smoking. So what was the response to this revelation that diets high in meat, eggs, and dairy could be harmful to health as smoking? Well, one nutrition scientist replied that it was potentially dangerous to compare the effects of smoking to the effects of meat and cheese. Why? Because a smoker might think, well, wait a second. Why bother quitting smoking? My ham and cheese sandwich is just as bad for me. <clears throat> so we can't tell anyone about this meat and cheese thing. <laughs> this, um, this reminds me of a famous Philip Morris cigarette ad, which tried to downplay the risk by saying, you think secondhand smoke is bad, increasing the risk of lung cancer 19%, Drinking one or two glasses of milk may be three times worth, 62% increased risk of lung cancer. Or doubling the risk frequently cooking with oil. Or tripling your risk of heart disease by eating non-vegetarian. Or multiplying your risk sixfold by eating lots of meat and dairy. Right. 
So, they conclude, let's keep some perspective here. The risk of lung cancer for second half smoke well below that for other everyday activities. So, breathe deep. <laughs> it's like saying, yeah, yeah, don't worry about getting stabbed because getting shot so much worse. <laughs> How about neither? Right? Two risks don't make a right. Of course, you'll note Philip Morris stopped throwing dairy under the bus once they purchased Kraft Foods. Just, uh, just saying. All right, what about the other 13 leading causes of death? 